there are totally two type of productivities are there one is called as primary productivity another is called secondary productivity so if you're talking about the primary productivity second mark i'm repeating one is called uh, uh, primary productivity another is called uh, secondary productivity so like this two type of productivities are there right so what we need to understand uh, this primary productivity of course takes plenty of sunlight and makes the plant if you're talking about the secondary productivity the plants are eaten by the plants are taken by uh, the plenty of uh, animals okay this is a very good example of the secondary productivity so sunlight is making the plant sunlight makes the plant to survive this is a very good example of primary productivity so plan is taken by the animal secondary productivity so the productivity we need to discuss about net productivity gross productivity for example i am living in canada i am earning salary of about 9 lakhs so i need to pay tax for about uh, 3.6% 36% i need to pay the tax let us consider um, it is it varies from one slab to other slab so i am paying 36% tax um, so yeah, so my 9 lakhs minus 36 3.6 lakhs so the remaining amount will be my net the remaining amount how much will be the net term? so if you're talking about the 5.4 so my take home salary is 5.4 so this is nothing but my net salary so in canada us right so what we need to understand so this is your net productivity so this is your gross productivity so have that and have a better idea to uh, incorporate this concept with the plant productivity. So I am a plant, I am making the biomass in a huge volume of about 100 kg uh, after utilizing 1000 kg. So that means 900 kg I wasted for my survival, for my maintenance. So this is the minus. So the gross is 1000, net is uh, 100 kg, right? So gross is 1000 kg and it is 100 kg. This is the way you are remembering in your mind, right? So now we are entering into the next major concept in the productivity. Um, we know the energy serves as a driving force for the operation and uh, okay, yeah, sustenances. Just a minute. Uh, before entering into the productivity, uh, we already told the explanation. Uh, with a very good introduction segment. Uh, now, in this productivity, as I already told you, primary productivity, secondary productivity, how it is calculated, but still more, we should give the proper explanation in terms of kilocalories, in terms of, see, sometimes they will ask the question in kilocalories, which is represented as uh, kilocalories, so kilo calories. Okay, sometimes we need to mention kilojoules, right? So now, for example, 1000 kilocalories, 1000 kilocalories in this minus, um, here we are taking 900 and then we are getting plus 100 kilocalories we are getting. So where is 900 gone? This 900 gone for maintenance. Since this 900 gone for maintenance, right? Okay, this is 900 gone for maintenance. So this is the way we are remembering in our mind. So 1000 kilocalories, 1000 kilocalories minus 900. So 100 kilocalories. So like this, instead of kilocalories, we can say kilojoules also. Why you are subtracting always 900, 900. Okay, always we are seeing, sometimes you are saying in terms of kilogram, I am saying 100 kg. Then again back minus 90 is getting deducted. And then we are getting 10 kg as output. Okay what is the reason why you are always making 90 90 90 minus the reason is we are always keeping in our mind 10 percentage energy gain law so 10 percentage energy gain law is a law which indicates 10 percentage energy gain law which indicates the transfer of the energy the amount of energy which is gained the amount of energy which is gained 10 percentage energy gain law okay uh, 10 percentage energy gain law. Okay. 
plan takes 10 percentage of the energy right so this is the way you are remembering in your mind now we are entering into the next important concept net productivity see npp uh, is nothing but the i already told to you um, net productivity and gross productivity we already discussed n denotes net and g denotes gross okay gross productivity gross productivity net productivity right so what else we should suppose to know so here uh, is a crucial represents the biomass accessibility to a trough such as herbivores and decomposers herbivores and decomposers right so uh, Biomass accessible to heterotroph, such as herbivores and decomposers, like this we discussed with you, right? So decomposers, very good example is denitrifying bacteria. So denitrifying bacteria is a one example. If you are talking about uh, ammonifying bacteria, is the other example. Is the other example. So these are the decomposers like this. We already had given the narration for you. Now, if you're talking about heterotroph, parasite is a classic heterotroph. Saprophyte is a classic heterotroph. Okay. Insectivorous plant is a heterotroph. Many are saying plants are autotroph. Correct. Exceptionals are there. That is your board exam question. So insectivorous, insectivorous plant is a classic example for the uh, heterotroph. Parasite, not only parasite, not only saprophyte, not only insectivorous, okay, not only animals, uh, like this we can give worms, many examples we can give, right? They're all heterotroph, heterotroph. So secondary productivity is the rate of which the consumers creates new organic matter. Consumer creates new organic matter, okay? Uh, so new organic matters in the sense, what exactly? Uh, consumers creates new organic matter. Consumers creates new organic matter. Can I give you a beautiful example uh, for this? Um, new organic matter in the sense what? Um, can you give an example for that? Yes, of course. For example, uh, I'm a goat. I'm making my flesh by eating the grasses, by eating the greens. Um, so this is a very good example of secondary productivity. I'm a plant. I am making my own body by utilizing sunlight. I'm a plant. I'm making my own body by utilizing sunlight. If that is the case, uh, that is a primary productivity example, right? So I think so you understood the primary productivity and secondary productivity, right? So if we're talking about primary productivity includes nutrients availability and the photosynthesis capacity of the plant, photosynthesis capacity of the plant. As a result, the primary productivity varies between different ecosystem, varies between different ecosystem, right? So uh, as we already told you, the nutrients are much more. The photosynthesis also happens much more. Okay. So how come you are saying nutrients are much more, photosynthesis are much more? I'm not understanding. Can I give an example? Yes, of course. In the soil, if magnesium concentration is very less, the plant leaf will be not formed properly. Magnesium is very, very, very important for making the leaf chlorophyll. For that to happen, we need to have a good concentration of the soil magnesium which will be given by uh, the beneficial microbe from the unavailable mineral. So if you're talking about unavailable mineral, okay, here, uh, if you're talking about the unavailable mineral, so unavailable mineral uh, is basically is responsible for uh, not supporting the plant leaf so that the unavailable mineral should be converted to available mineral unavailable mineral should be converted to available mineral which is possible with a uh, very good amount of uh, beneficial microbe 
So beneficial microbe are doing a classic work uh, in converting the unavailable mineral into available mineral like magnesium, which is used by the plant leaf. So if the nutrients is available in a good quantity, then making the plant is very easy for us, right? So now we are coming for the next phase, decomposition. Before entering into the decomposition, if anybody are having any doubt, please let me know. I am there with you to explain, right? So two components of the primary productivity. One is gross productivity, another is net productivity. See how much we explain as of now that they are asking in the uh, board papers, but how to narrate the answer in such a way the concerned paper evaluator will, will, will give the full marks. We are talking about the gross primary productivity. Okay. So how I written point by point answer for the better narration. This is the way we need to narrate the answer, right? So point number one, point number two, point number three, point number four. Okay. After writing all these points, we need to underline the important word photosynthesis. Okay. And then organic components. Okay. Reproduction. So if the same question, if they're asking about the gross productivity in the three mark question, uh, how we can explain furthermore, can you say something which is more than this line? Okay, how much you prepared being a teacher? Like this, if you're asking uh, as, so we know very well the sunlight of high quality in the sense, uh, we know very well the red region and blue region are classic in giving the are in promoting the good concentration of photosynthesis. So maximum photosynthesis is possible, is possible. Maximum photosynthesis is possible in the case of blue and in the case of uh, red region, right? So if the sunlight rich in red and blue is falling, then there will be maximum photosynthesis. Can you give one beautiful example for that evergreen forest? Okay, evergreen forest. So every time, when we are going to that particular area uh, in all the period, we are seeing this evergreen forest, which is quite amazing uh, in terms of productivity, right? So now if we're talking about the significant portion of grass productivity is used with the plant themselves during respiration. That is why we given minus value. So for example, I am doing photosynthesis and I am replacing 90% for my own purpose so the net productivity is 10. Okay, so 100 kg, so 90 kg and 10 kg. Are you getting my point? So again, back I'm repeating one is 100 kg, another is 90 kg, another is 10 kg, right? So this is nothing but a net productivity. This is nothing but a gross productivity. So gross productivity, I told you, and then I told about net productivity, I told you, right? So net productivity is 10 kg. So uh, any one of you are having any doubt, please let me know. I'm there with you to help you out. So no one is having the doubt. So now uh, how to explain the productivity? I told you the time, right? If you're talking about uh, the net primary productivity, uh, how we'll do the calculations. So basically in this particular area, we need to uh, understand the formula arrival, gross productivity equal to, okay, gross primary productivity is sunlight, I already told you, right? Sunlight is the main sources, okay? If you're talking about net primary productivity, we are substarting that equation also we already had given to you, okay? Sometime they won't explain net primary productivity. They will say N double P, okay, which is uh, not applicable, which is not applicable, which is not applicable for certain species. Uh, why? Because it dies uh, very faster. You know, very well, mayflies will live only for one day. So mayfly will live only for one day, unlike other animals, right? So net primary productivity Okay, and the gross primary productivity, we can't understand or we can't implement for understanding those concepts for few species. For example, I already had given the example mayfly. 
So this may fly, of course, survive is for one day, but not for the second day. So I can't calculate this net primary productivity in the second day for the mayfly. The second day for the mayfly. So there is a message we need to understand. So any one of you are having doubt, please let me know. I'm there with you to help you out. Uh, right? So now we already have given the examples. Now we are going for the tips for the example. Uh, the rate of photosynthesis are the factors that influence the primary productivity. But because as I already told you, photosynthesis is a very, very important factor for net primary productivity, but not for the secondary productivity, but not for the secondary productivity. So primary productivity completely depends upon the photosynthesis. Completely depends upon the photosynthesis. Are you getting my point? So this is the way you are understanding the concept in detail. So now, any one of you are having any doubt in the productivity, please let me know. So we are entering into decomposition process. Before entering into the decomposition process, I already given the examples. So questions we'll discuss in detail. Can you see this? What is the term used to, uh, what is the term used to quantify the amount of biomass, right? Um, I think so. You can see the question very nicely by plants through photosynthesis within a specific area or a definite time frame. So we know very well the GPP, gross primary productivity, is a term used to quantify the total production of organic matter through photosynthesis within a specific area or a definite time period. Okay. Okay, here. Uh, so there is gross primary productivity. So we not subtracted the utilization. We not subtract the utilization, right? So there is a message we need to understand. So I think so. I understood this question. Now we are coming for what is the primary productivity usually expressed uh, in height or weight, in volume or temperature? Of course, in the case of weight, right? We'll express in case of weight. Can you see this? Weight. So we'll explain in terms of weight. So the primary productivity is typically expressed in terms of weight or energy per unit area. Now we are entering into the third question. What does the net primary productivity represents? Yeah. Uh, if you're talking about the Net primary productivity represents the total production of organic matter through photosynthesis process, right? So the biomass accessible to heterotroph, rate at which consumers creates new organic matter, what does net primary productivity represents? Okay, like this they are given. So here, can you see this? The biomass accessible to the heterotroph after subtracting the respiratory loss. Respiratory loss. Why? Because for there is a prime net primary productivity. So I'm a plant. I did photosynthesis. While doing photosynthesis, I spent this much amount of energy. So that I need to recover as a utilized one. So the primary productivity, uh, if you're talking about primary productivity. Primary productivity, another is secondary productivity. One is primary productivity, another is secondary productivity. Like this, we already had given to you, right? So here in this particular location, in this particular location, so in the primary productivity are coming to which level? So we know very well. Um, Either you take primary productivity or secondary productivity, always we need to subtract with the amount of biomass utilized. The amount of biomass utilized. The amount of biomass utilized. So the amount of biomass utilized, we are subtracting the primary productivity. The amount of biomass utilized in the case of secondary productivity, we are subtracting. So you're getting what? Net primary productivity. You're getting what? Net secondary productivity. Net primary productivity net secondary productivity, right? 
So, so option B is the correct answer. So we already told for you. Now we are coming for the question number four. In question number four, commonly you listen. What is the reason behind the relativity, the low oceanic relativity, compared to their vast expanse, as mentioned in the content? Okay, lack of plant uh, species in the ocean, high nutrition quality in the ocean, low photosynthetic capacity of the oceanic plant, and unexplored territories in the ocean. Right. So, so what we need to understand is uh, low ocean productivity is attributed to the um, low photosynthetic capacity of your oceanic plant, right? So, why low photosynthetic? See, they are given the answer C is the answer. So, why the answer is like this? Why the answer is like this? If you're talking about the answers, uh, low photosynthetic capacity of the oceanic plant because the salt content. If the salt content is very high, if you're talking about if the salt content is very high, uh, then obviously the oxygen concentration is very high. So the salt content is very high, oxygen concentration is very high. No, it will be low. So if the oxygen content is very low. Okay, uh, and then second thing is um, uh, the plant which grows in the salty water are very, very less. Uh, why? Because of the salt disturbs the plant uh, circulation. So plant circulation, plants nutrients utilization which is disturbed, plants nutrient circulation uh, or plant circulation, plants nutrient circulation, plants Okay, nutrients circulation, plants nutrient circulation is disturbed. Uh, if there is a salt uh, in the water at the maximum level, so that is the reason why we are saying uh, that is the reason why we are saying uh, the salt concentration is very high. Uh, the plant survival chance is very less. Survival chance is very less. Okay, and also photosynthesis rate is also very less. Why? Because the dissolved carbon dioxide concentration uh, and dissolved oxygen concentration is very, very less. So dissolved carbon dioxide concentration is very, very important for the aquatic plants, which is completely submerged in the water. And as, as well as the dissolved oxygen concentration is very, very important for the submerged plant. Right. So this is the way you are remembering your mind. So now we are coming for um, this very number of questions. And then whenever you have time, you can see the net primary productivity. And now we are coming for the examples. The gross primary productivity, net primary productivity, these worked examples we already narrated for you. Tips for the exam we already narrated for you. So presentation, uh, when we are discussing about the primary productivity and net productivity that we already discussed in detail with you.